and welcome to I24 News Sports Daily Magazine with all the latest scores and stories from the world of sports. And we have plenty of action coming your way. Barcelona will not be allowed to make any transfers until January 2016, but other teams obviously can. And there could be a very big move on the way. And we also take a close look at the rowing scene here in Israel. All that and much more coming up just now. We begin with the news that will have serious implications on Barcelona as the Court of Arbitration for Sports, CAS, rejected the appeal by the club against the transfer ban imposed on them, meaning Barcelona will not be allowed to make any transfers until January 2016. The Catalan giants were handed the initial ban by FIFA after being found guilty of signing underage players from outside of Spain. Barca's appeal to CAS forced a delay of the initial ban and allowed them to make transfers this past summer, which included Luis Suarez and Ivan Rakitic, among others. But no transfers will be allowed during the January window and the summer transfer period. Premier League now in the second Christmas match day came to its end last night when Liverpool met Swansea in Anfield. Finally, it looked good for the mighty Reds who beat the Welsh visitors for one. Adam Lallana was the man for Liverpool, scoring twice in the second half and earning his compliments from manager Brendan Rodgers. Very pleased. I think he's a wonderfully gifted player. Um, big move for him coming to here from Southampton when he was the captain. And I think for all the players coming in, it was, it was um, it's difficult. You know, you come into a club this size and you know, the whole expectancy, you, you never know it until you arrive here. So, but I think they're now starting to adapt to that, they're starting to adapt to what we demand here. And, and how far we want to go. And tonight, you look at the team, it was a very young team. You know, in terms of the average age of that side, it was about, well, about 22, 23 years of age. So, so I was very pleased with the overall performance of, of Adam and uh, as the overall team tonight. So Rogers is very pleased. Someone who's probably not as happy is Alan Irvine. The now former West Bromwich manager was sacked by the club less than seven months into the job following a run of poor results. West Brom lost seven of their last nine matches and are currently 16th in the Premier League, just one point above relegation zone. Assistant managers Rob Kelly and Keith Downing will take charge of the team for the trip to West Ham on New Year's Day. Apart from the Premier League, all other major European leagues are still on their winter break and the teams use this time to hold some interesting friendly matches. One such game will be held tonight in Morocco, where French champions Paris Saint-Germain will face Italian club Inter PSG is only third in the French league in what seems to be one of the tightest races we have seen in years. Manager Lauren Blanc knows his team should perform better in the second half of the season if they want to retain the title. Everybody agrees to say that during the first part of the championship, we were not rigorous enough in our game, not rigorous enough outside the pitch. So I will evolve a little bit, but rigorous is not something we should only talk about. It may be a bit hard for Blanc to achieve his goals if he loses one of his biggest stars, but according to reports in France, it may happen. L'Equipe Daily reports that Edison Cavani, who is unhappy in the Parisian club, has to be transferred this coming January, with Arsenal being a potential destination. The striker from Uruguay, who did not make the trip with the team to Morocco, is reportedly feeling mistreated by Blanc, who plays with him on the left side and placing Zlatan Ibrahimovic in the center. PSG announced a transfer at the moment is out of the question, but we can never know what will happen if the right offer arrives. When France hosts the big football events, the fans feel their team can win it. After all, they won the 1984 Euro, which they hosted, and the 1998 World Cup again on home soil. The next big event, Euro 2016, will again take place in France. Is there a chance to repeat the success? Lise Barnbaum and Michael Friedman tell us it may all depend on the generation of 93. The Blues had their golden age in the late 90s. After Euro 2000, which they won, the French national team lost its luster. The 1987 generation has disappointed thanks to players like Hatem Ben Arfa. But the group, which was born in 1993, signals the revival of Les Blues. The most famous member of this new group is Paul Pogba, part of the squad which won the Under-20 World Cup in 2013. His performances with Juventus shows he is a promising player in the future a reality today. 
d'avenir, je l'ai dit. On the list of 100 players to follow in 2015, published by the website In Bed with Maradona, there are six French, which is the same number as the Germans, Spanish, and Dutch. Jeffrey Kondagbia of Monaco, Leon Samuel Umtiti, and of course, Paul Pogba, could restore France to its former greatness. The press even called up a generation of great potential. These stars shine with France, but they sometimes have not peaked with their respective clubs. At 21, Raphael Varane became the youngest captain in the history of the French team since World War II. Yet at Real Madrid, the defender remains a second-string player in the eyes of his coach, Carlo Ancelotti. Next to the untouchable Sergio Ramos and Pepe, Varane is still new. But still, his former coach, Jose Mourinho, has all the same enthusiasm for him. I have already made young players start in the Champions League. I could talk about Rafael Varane at Real Madrid, who for me is the best central defender in the world. These comments were enough to spark rumors about Varane going to Chelsea during the next summer transfer window. The former defender from Lens came to Real at the age of 18 for almost nothing, but now would cost at least 25 million euros. This change would make life better for Varane, who is said to have problems with rival Pepe. In any case, Varane has established himself as one of the future stars for the Blues. Rafael, Rafael obviously confirmed for France, but he plays for Real Madrid. So even if he is young, he has insurance, trust, and is defensive. He goes fast, he's smart, knows where to be placed. It is true that he had to catch up with Cristiano Ronaldo, mainly with speed. While Cristiano is fast, Rafael is full of confidence, which is good for him and good for us. Rafael, oui, il a pleine confiance. Tant mieux pour lui, tant mieux pour nous. With less than two years before Euro 16 kicks off, the 93 generation still has time to let its talents grow after a promising World Cup, which has shown beautiful possibilities. 2014 that will end tomorrow night was an exceptional year for Real Madrid, who won four titles, including La Decima, the 10th European title, and the Spanish team was also the big winner in the Globe Soccer Awards held last night in Dubai. Cristiano Ronaldo, as you could expect, was voted as the best player of the year. Manager Carlo Ancelotti was voted as manager of the year. And Florentino Perez was voted president of the year. Even James Rodriguez, who also plays for the Spanish Giants, was voted as the revelation of the year. And they surely feel great about all they have achieved in 2014. I just feel happy. It's one more trophy. It's dedication and hard work. I have to say thank you to the, my teammates. Uh, to the club, Real Madrid, my president, my coach, uh, Mr. Ancelotti, because we did a fantastic season. We win four titles, which is, in my opinion, it was very, very important. And we are one of the best teams in the world, so to win this trophy for me, it's, it's a great pressure. NBA now and the Sacramento Kings began a four-game road trip in Brooklyn. The Nets, who won three of four coming into this game, seem to have it under control. Mason Plumley with a dunk made sure they finished the first half with a double-digit lead. Third quarter and it got a little physical. Plumley and Ben McLemore go for the loose ball and the fight nearly breaks, but everyone backs off just in time and we can go back to basketball. The final points on the quarter came from veteran Kevin Garnett with the alley-oop. Nets up by 13. The Kings did get close, just over five minutes to go, and Rudy Gay makes it a five-point game, but Mason Plumlee would not let this go away. Brooklyn wins again, this time 107-99. to The NHL Winter Classic has already become a tradition, and it will take place for the eighth time in New Year's Day, this time in Washington, D.C. Washington's baseball park, usually the home of the Nationals from the MLB, is becoming a giant ice rink, that will host the match between local team, the Washington Capitals, and the Chicago Blackhawks. The transformation of the stadium takes about a week, and tickets go for up to $300. Despite the prices, the game is already sold out. The regular season came to its end in the NFL. The Washington Redskins hosted the Dallas Cowboys on their final game, and their embarrassing 44-17 defeat was not the only problem for the team. Demonstrators gathered near FedEx Field in protest of the team's name, as many are unhappy by the insensitive title for their beloved American football squad. As fans walked by, signs were held demanding the team's owner, Daniel Snyder, to change what they believe is a racist title for their team. 
Various protests have been held in the past when the Redskins played away, but this is the first time such a protest takes place in front of their home stadium. Rowing is a sport gaining more and more popularity in Israel, and the place where athletes come to train is the Daniel Rowing Center in northern Tel Aviv. I-24 news reporter Mirav Savir spent the day there learning how it's done and meeting Israel's prospects for the Rio Olympics. <laughs> Rowing is a sport usually associated with the U.S. and the U.K., Cambridge and Oxford, but it's been growing here in Israel also. We came to the Daniel Rowing Center in Tel Aviv, the home of the Israeli national team and Paralympic rowers, to take a closer look at the growing sport. Rowing's history in Israel dates back several decades, but it's not until recently that the sport's popularity gained momentum. And the Daniel Rowing Center has seen the impact. The center is named after Daniel Amichai Marcus, a rower who immigrated to Israel. He was uh, unfortunately killed in a very tragic car accident while uh, in his uh, military service. And his family uh, looked for ways not only to um, uh, have him in, uh, in, uh, in memory, but also to promote the sport that Daniel loved so much. And it's the training ground for the Israeli national team. Danny Friedman and Oleg Gonorovsky have been rowing together for four years. Over his more than a decade-long career, Danny has finished in the top ten on both the European and world level. Being the single in the European Championship final, it's unbelievable. And I, I remember this till now, because nobody before do it, and I work so hard, and when I get there, it's, it's cost everything. Oleg and Danny's day starts bright and early with a rowing session, but before hitting the waters, they gave me a little lesson in the basics. Yeah, the main difference is the weight of the crew that the boat can contain. Uh, this is more for lightweight rowers, and we are quite heavy, so this is both for us. Then it's time to stop explaining and start getting serious. The two are currently preparing for this summer's Rio Olympics qualifications. They spend over 20 hours a week training, and the months ahead are crunch time. They are headed to Spain for a training camp in the coming days, and competitions begin in the spring. The most important one is in August, the World Championships. Dani and Oleg must place in the top 11 if they want to continue to Rio. The two believe in themselves, but know this is a sport and anything can happen. We can do it. We know we believe, of course. If we, we not believe, so we can do it. And uh, we work hard. So if we qualify it, this is the dream. And this is a sport. If everything was uh, calculated before, it was no sport spirit. You know, everything is possible. You need just to believe and to work very hard to do it. Danny and Oleg say people appreciate what they do coming from a small country where the rowing conditions aren't optimal. And it's the camaraderie in the sport that makes it special. Outside you see the rowing, the, the hard work, but about inside it's, it's very warm. The friendship between the athletes and uh, the spirit between, between uh, the athletes, it's, it's so small and, and so big from inside. I think this is the thing what keeps me in this sport. And tomorrow, Mirab will bring us the story of Moran Samuel, a Paralympic rower who is also a basketball player, and more than all, an example of how you can overcome any physical disability. On to something completely different. The deadly massacre of the school children in Peshawar, Pakistan earlier this month sent shockwaves throughout the world, and some people felt it's not enough to just sit home. One such person is boxing champion Amir Khan, who decided to visit Pakistan to show his solidarity with the victims of the attack. Khan, who is a WBC welterweight champion, was born in the UK but comes from a Pakistani background and he held a prayer at the site of the killing and spoke of the importance of his visit. It's very sad to come here, you know, to see the pictures of the poor children who died and the innocent children who were killed and the teacher and the, teacher and the, the teachers in the school. So I've come here to show my respects in Pakistan. Uh, obviously, I was here for a couple of days. And the main reason I came to Pakistan was to come to Peshawar and to see the, the parents and the children and to give children confidence to go back to school. Because a lot of children are going to be very scared to go to school now. So it's all about us to giving them confidence and also improving the security around the areas and pushing them to go forward because the children are the future of Pakistan. 
And we will end our show with action from the Downhill World Cup, where the latest event was held in Santa Catarina, Italy. American skier Travis Gannong was victorious at the men's event in Santa Catarina. Gannong's time of 1 minute 32.42 seconds moved him into the top 10 in the overall standings as he claimed his first win of the season. Austria's Matthias Meyer came in second and local skier Dominique Perez completed the podium. The next event will take place in Croatia next Tuesday. And that's it for us today. Don't forget, you can watch this and every other show on our website at i24news.tv. We're also on Facebook and on Twitter. Thank you for watching and have a beautiful day.